The reading is from 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brothers and sisters, I do not want you to be uninformed. You know that when you were pagans, you were enticed and led astray to idols that could not speak. Therefore, I want you to understand that no one speaking by the Spirit of God ever says, let Jesus be cursed. And no one can say, Jesus is Lord, except by the Holy Spirit. Now there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. <clears throat> and there are varieties of services, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. To one is given through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom, <clears throat> and to another the utterance of knowledge according to the same Spirit. To another, faith by the same Spirit. To another, gifts of healing by the one spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another the discernment of spirits, to another various kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. All these are activated by one and the same spirit, who allots to each one individually just as the Spirit chooses. Here ends the reading. The Gospel according to St. John, this first chapter, verses 1 to 11. On the third day, there was a wedding in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. When the wine gave out, the mother of Jesus said to him, they have no wine. And Jesus said to her, woman, what concern is of that for you and me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, do whatever he tells you. 
Now standing there were six stone water jars for the Jewish rites of purification, each holding 20 or 30 gallons. Jesus said to them, fill the jars with water. And they filled them up to the brim. He said to them, now draw some out and take it to the chief steward. So they took it. When the steward tasted the water that had become wine and did not know where it came from, though the servants who had drawn the water knew, the steward called the bridegroom and said to him, Everyone serves the good wine first and then the inferior wine after the guests have become drunk. But you have kept the good wine until now. Jesus did this, the first of his signs in Cana of Galilee, and revealed his glory, and his disciples believed in him. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. Today we heard two different Bible readings. In the first, we heard about how we all have different gifts. And we also heard about Jesus turning water into wine at a wedding that he and his disciples were invited to. My lovely assistant, Abby, is gonna help us with a little visual. Each of these vessels represents one of us. Each of us have different gifts within us. Now, when Jesus turned the water into wine, he had the servants pour pure water into the different vessels, just as Abby here is using just pure water and pouring it into each of these vessels. When the servants put the pure water into the vessel, Jesus had turned it into wine for the guests at the wedding. Similarly, we should put pure thoughts and pure things into our minds and our bodies and our vessels to allow the gifts that we've been given to grow and to be nurtured and to shine through. But most importantly, and what our first reading in 1 Corinthians was talking about, is that each and every one of us have been given gifts. And each and every one of us have been given different gifts. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 7, it reads, To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. Each and every one of us have been given gifts, and though they may be different, no one gift is better than another, but they're all meant to be used together. We each have a different purpose and a different reason for what we have been given. This week, I challenge you to not only think on your own spiritual gifts, but to think about some of the spiritual gifts of those around you and how you can continue to help each other grow. Have a great week, everybody. Because of the privilege of witnessing a solemn service where two people make promises to and proclaim their love for one another. And after that, we get to go celebrate with them at the reception that follows. And guess what? Today, You know, there's a horrible mistake that made when religion and church are words synonymous with boring and lifeless. Yes, of course, there are things to be serious about, and there need to be moments of great solemnity in our common spiritual life, but the kingdom of God is like a party, a feast with fine food and well-aged wines. That's the very opposite of boring and lifeless. And this is why Jesus does what he does at the wedding feast in Cana. 
The party was going, the food and the wine had been carefully planned and executed, and then the wine ran out. The hosts had either not thought that part through very well, or their guests were particularly thirsty that day. Boring Jesus, lifeless Jesus, would have said, great, now that the wine is gone, the party is over, we can all go, leave, go home, and get down to serious business. But no, that's not the Jesus we have. Jesus is asked by his mother to do something about the embarrassing situation, and he does. He turns water into wine, 120 to 180 gallons of it. Can you even begin to imagine that quantity of wine? Denoted by her relationship with Jesus. Here, it is her urging that initiates Jesus' action. The exchange between Jesus and his mother is really kind of typical of a conversation we might experience with our own child who is enjoying himself or herself at a wedding reception with their friends. And I think we can find some humor in it. Truth be told, we don't do ourselves any favors by insisting that the Bible is void of humor. Jesus' mothers notes that the wedding hosts have run out of wine. Jesus' response is, what concern is that of you and me? Like, maybe they should have hired a better wedding planner? But then she tells the servants to do whatever Jesus says. I have this image of the mother of Jesus, much like us encouraging our child to get on the school bus for the first time. Come on, you can do it. I know you can. But I also wonder what she saw in that moment. What had Jesus revealed to her at that point that would cause her to believe that such a miracle was possible from him? How did she know that this was the time for revelation, the event of epiphany? Another interesting item to note is that the mother of Jesus appears only twice in the Gospel of John, at the wedding of Cana and at the foot of the cross. While we are not told here about her recurrence later in the Gospel, we get a hint of her return and Jesus' reason for what seems to be a refusal to her request. My hour has not yet come. Throughout the Gospel of John, Jesus will refer to his hour, which signals the time of his death. It is more than poignant that the mother of Jesus brackets his life, surrounds Jesus' earthly ministry. She is at the beginning of his career and then watches him die. She is the nurturing force when he is the word made flesh, a shared parenthood with God the Father. So what difference does this make in the season of Epiphany, you may ask? Perhaps it might be to help us to remember Jesus in a manger in the midst of miracles. Perhaps it is a reminder that whenever Jesus reveals his divinity, he simultaneously reveals something about his humanity. Jesus' hour had not come. His hour refers to his death, resurrection, and ascension in the Gospel of John. It was too soon for wondrous events in Jesus' ministry, yet he performs a rather large miracle. The stone jars at the wedding would have been huge containers capable of holding 18 to 20 gallons of water each. There were six of them, and what we are privileged to witness is God's incredible abundance and inclusivity. Because not only was there enough wine to share with the whole village now, it was better than what had been first served. The maitre d' made the ironic statement that the good wine had been saved until now. 
Of course, this is symbolic in a way of saying that Jesus is better than what had come before. He is the height of God's glory. In God's own timing, the Messiah has come. When the guests were getting parched and the host nervous and there was no recourse but to shut the party down, it is at this point that Jesus quietly intervenes. It may not have been the most convenient time for Jesus, but because of the needs of the guests and the request of his mother, he will do what must be done, because this is why he came. The quiet miracle is a manifestation of Christ's glory, but no one at the wedding actually saw it, nor was there a thunderclap to herald the event God's glory is not what humans expect. God's presence in, is pointing to his glory. His glory is not for mere display, but has the purpose to fulfill his service to his creation. God is responsive to people's needs. He is not aloof to the human plight. God has, in fact, responded to human suffering and the suffering and death of his only son. He buries himself in a quiet tomb to do his work on Easter, where no one can see or hear. If God cries when we cry, God also laughs and smiles when we do. God is with us when we feel joy and he rejoices with us in our thankfulness. When we celebrate birthdays or weddings or wedding anniversaries or the birth of a child, God is with us. When we get a new job, receive a promotion, get a raise, God is with us. When the Jews of Jesus' time pictured the kingdom of heaven, they pictured a banquet. Jesus proclaimed that the kingdom of heaven was upon them, and to prove that, he provided 180 gallons of wine, providing the wine for the wedding in this kind of abundance was a sign that the kingdom of God had indeed come. The kingdom of God is here for us now, not just some distant time in the future when we meet our maker. Today, God is inviting us to live in a close relationship with him. Today, we live under God's rule and God promises to love us and wants for us to live an abundant life of faith, trusting in those promises. The disciples who saw believed and understood this truth and celebrated it. In Christ, the very nature of glory is being redefined. It is glory with a silent purpose and aim to create and maintain faith in Christ Jesus, who responds to the human need in ways that seem hidden and mysterious, but whose deeds are open to the eyes of faith, so that we, like all who believe, might have life in his name.
sharing the words together. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Thank you for your continued support of our ministry here at St. Paul's. Your offerings are greatly appreciated and enable us to reach out in witness and service to our community. Now let's take a moment to ask God's blessings upon our offering. God of love, you call us beloved children and fill us with your grace. Receive our lives and the gifts we offer. Abide with us and send us in service to a suffering world. For the sake of your beloved child, Jesus Christ. Amen. The Spirit of the Lord is poured out upon us in abundance. So we are bold to pray for the church, the world, and all that God has made. By your spirit, activate within your church gifts of faith, healing, and prophecy. Unite those who profess your name across congregations, denominations, and geographic boundaries. Open our hearts to recognize and celebrate surprising miracles. God of grace, your creation reflects your generosity. Bless farmers, migrant workers, orchard keepers, ranchers, and all who tend the abundance of their land. Protect food and water sources from destruction that all can eat and drink and be satisfied. God of grace, hear our prayer. By your wisdom, by your spirit, grant wisdom, knowledge, and discernment to those who hold leadership positions at any level. Direct policymakers toward compassionate decisions that build up safe and just communities. Lead all authorities in seeking and serving the common good. God of grace. As Jesus provided generously in a moment of need, provide generous gifts of healing for those in need this day, especially those on our prayer list and in our hearts. Provide abundantly for all who are hungry or thirsty, all seeking shelter, and all who seek peace. God of grace, hear our prayer. You see us for who we are, and you delight in us. Embrace those struggling with self-worth, wrestling with self-identity, 
or facing significant life transition. Embrace, too, St. Paul's Church and congregation during our pastoral transition. Remind us that nothing can separate us from your love. God of grace, hear our prayer. We now offer our intercessions aloud or in our hearts. I would like to offer a prayer for the family of Aggie Zepp. God of grace, hear our prayer. You bless us through the spiritual gifts of the saints who have gone before us. We give thanks for the life of Martin Luther King Jr. and all who have modeled the way of courageous faith. God of grace, hear our prayer. Since we have such great hope in your promises, O God, we lift these and all of our prayers to you in confidence and faith. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Gathered into one, let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. The God of hope fills us with all joy and peace in believing, so that we may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit, through Jesus Christ, for whom we wait. Amen. Go in peace. Christ has come. Thanks be to God.